Now at the same time, another paradigm shift is going to have to happen in the next few months because eventually, and later I think this summer, we'll see a big change in the political realities of sovereignty in Scotland. I've talked many times about the sovereignty of the people of Scotland being the supreme, if you like, seat of power in Scotland. We, the people of Scotland, actually are the community of the realm. We are the crown of Scotland. The crown of Scotland is vested in the community of the realm, which is the old terminology basically for everyone who lives here. And despite the fact that uh, politicians have hitherto, and I'm not just talking about unionist and English and British MPs and politicians from those parties, I'm talking about politicians from the SNP, politicians from ALBA, and maybe even politicians from the Green Party, have all assumed up until now that Westminster actually has sovereignty here in Scotland. Now I've told you on numerous occasions that this is not true, and still is not true. The difficulty that the politicians have is that they have this very fixed mindset. They are used to dealing with the United Kingdom being in charge of Scotland. And it's been assumed because that's what we've been told by the British establishment, that they have full control over Scotland, that they have the sovereignty um, to exploit our natural resources and all the rest of it. But from a legal standpoint, even though these politicians might regard um, our historical um, constitutional documents such as the Claim of Right Act, the Declaration of Our Broth, Union of the Crowns, all of these things which f actually guarantee the sovereignty of the people. Although these politicians may regard these as mouldy old pieces of history, it's worth remembering that the entire Westminster system is based on mouldy old history. All of Westminster's stupid traditions and its really crazy systems of doing things are all based on mouldy old history. And yet that is the accepted reality of politics at Westminster. All of which derives from mouldy old history and they don't even have a written constitution like we do. So it's going to take us, and I'm talking about you and I here, the people of this country, quite a long time to convince our own politicians, our own pro-independence politicians, that we actually do have this authority. And because we do have this authority, it is not Westminster that is the boss of these politicians in Edinburgh, or these politicians in Edinburgh representing Scotland. It's actually us, the people who voted for them. And because our constitution is written, and it's still in existence, even if you might claim it's mouldy old history, it's still legally there. It has not been abolished, it has not been repealed, and that sovereignty is still intact and may, and of course should, still be used to gain independence. It will take time though, because even the most fervent um, independence campaigning SNP, MPs or MSPs are still suffering from this delusion that Westminster has sovereignty here. It has never had sovereignty here. Even after the Treaty of the Union was signed, it still didn't have sovereignty and it continued not to have sovereignty for the last 300 and nearly 17 years. So on the anniversary of the 317th year since the signing of the least popular treaty in the history of Scotland, the one which nobody else voted for in the entire country except a number of heavily bribed and coerced officials who were negotiating the deal. On that anniversary this year, things will be changing. The paradigm shift from Westminster sovereignty to popular sovereignty will happen this year. And it's going to happen a lot sooner than you think. And it's going to be difficult for even our own politicians to get their heads around the fact that things have actually changed and that what they've been told and led to believe by Westminster, in some cases many of these um, politicians are MPs who sit at Westminster and have become used to Westminster sovereignty and their way of doing things, it's very much more difficult for us to change their mindset than it is for us to change our own because they 
these politicians are the ones who are steeped in all of this mouldy old history of Westminster and think that this is a fact, even though the English state doesn't have a written constitution guaranteeing anything at all, sovereignty or otherwise, it's just assumed. But we don't need to assume our um, popular sovereignty, we have documents that prove it. And when you have legal documentation, well, you can take that to the bank, can't you? So things are about to change. And the SNP is making all the right moves now with regards to the new green economy, linking up the innovations coming from universities and colleges with new startups, with larger industry and with bigger investment to come into that. And supporting all that all the way through is excellent news and will bolster support for independence if that is the prize at the other end of the process. In the meantime, the process needs to change and that means the people of Scotland will become and will realise, actually not that they'll become, they already are, but they will realise that they are sovereign and once people start to organise themselves into a very large organisation which is bigger than all of these independence parties, then I think we will be able to make sure that our politicians start doing what they're meant to be doing, which is organising a lawful Scottish referendum using the powers which they already have, which we are basically giving them through our own sovereign authority the right to hold the referendum in our own country despite anything that is said by the English state which doesn't have a constitution and whose own Supreme Court is barely 13 years old and has no authority here. So you get what I'm saying to you here. The reality of the situation is not what our politicians have been led to believe, nor is it what we, of the population of Scotland, have been led to believe for the last 317 years. But the, the period of being asleep for 317 years is sort of reminiscent of Sleeping Beauty, but at the end of this, we're all going to wake up and realise that the reality that we thought was true is nonsense. It was based on lies, omissions, and basically us being distracted away from the fact that we still have our sovereignty to the point where after the generations have regenerated several hundred times people have actually forgotten all about it but not everybody's forgotten all about it and this is where Salvo comes in. Salvo is the organization responsible for discovering the real truth of our sovereignty <clears throat> and that is going to become very apparent very very soon.